Hello everyone, all you watchers on YouTube, HVAC, Refrigeration Techs, and others. Thanks for watching. This video is was two parts. I had to make two different trips because the, I couldn't find the part immediately. It wasn't readily available. I had to get it from an electrical supply. And it was also raining on the first day. So... It's a 60 amp three phase breaker and it's 483 phase power and we're going to have to change it while there is live power here. So that's a little tricky. You always want to be careful with that. I've gotten lucky to where I've never been shocked and hit by anything that has serious current going through it. So I've been quite lucky in my life. So I want to keep it that way. Uh, we start by removing the plastic cover that covers it. It's just a little, a couple little Phillips screws hold it. And so, once the cover's off, the next thing I do is I insulate whatever driver I'm using. In this case, it's just a cheap little uh, replaceable head type of driver where you can put different chucks in it and. In the next thing I'll do is, is cut little strips of tape and hang them right there where I can grab them. That way when I have the live wire in my hand, I can just, with one hand, grab a piece of tape. So when I do this, I'm real, real cautious, real careful. I always like to wear my black gloves, you can see. I always make sure that like my arm is not resting on the, on the frame of the, the rack, exterior casing, whatever it's called, the, the shell of it. Make sure I'm not grounded anywhere. Um, and I'm just always very cautious with everything I'm doing, especially with a voltage that's so high. But if you're careful, you can do this stuff sometimes. You just have to make sure when you're disconnecting and connecting it that there's nothing that's running on that circuit. If you have something that's pulling current on a circuit and you, you disconnect it, try doing like what I'm doing right now the moment it becomes a loose connection but still touching it's you're gonna have problems it's gonna spark sometimes possibly extremely big uh, and that's how you get hurt so make sure always know what you're doing make sure there's no current running through any circuits um, make sure nothing can be back feeding see even though on the last one that I'm going to be working on, you would think that since it's the last one and the other two are disconnected, that, well, there's probably no power there. Well, once I disconnect it from there, it should be dead. Well, that might necess not necessarily be true. Um, or the same goes for, like, the first ones I pull off because they're the inputs. So don't take any chances. And then once it's all disconnected, whatever you're working on, check the voltage. Make sure that there is no power do that a couple of times during the job if you want to. It's always good to be safe. Now with this, uh, I'm taking the wires off the top of the breaker since they're already loose from the other side, the, the incoming wires. So I disconnected them from the bus bar or the, the main input. Now I'm taking them off the breaker and I'm going to set them to the side. Uh, it's just three little wires. find that, the, that to have been the easiest way to do this particular job. But, and some of these clips I speed up and some of them I don't, but I've already did all the, the video editing. I'm not going to go back and edit it no more. So, All right, so looking at this breaker, you can see that underneath it we have the contactor. It's just a few inches away and those wires that can conduct to the contactor between the breaker and the contactor they're very stiff so it's best thing to do with this is to lift the breaker out uh, and leave those wires in place instead of trying to take them off the contactor and take them off the breaker that was my opinion and my view of it so that's what I did so I loosen the bottom three lugs on the breaker and then in doing that, it's going to be ready to just lift right back out. But there's some screws that hold it down. 
So I get those screws out and preparing to pull out that breaker. But then once I take those screws out, that's really not all that's holding it. So it's the first time I actually was working on the breaker like this. So we've got the screws that hold it down. They're extra support because the primary method that this is being held down are little clips, little sliding clips. I'll show you here in a minute. So after I take the screws off, it doesn't move, it doesn't budge. So if you look up right there behind the breaker, you've got these little sliding clips. And you've got to lift all three of them at the same time, and then the breaker will, will pop out from the top. And then that's all I needed to do. Once I did that, it lifted right out. And that's it. So they made me buy new lugs for the top. So you can see that they're different. The old one has smaller little holes, openings, and the new one has bigger ones. So they made me buy those for nothing. I ended up uh, reused the smaller lugs because those are actually sized exactly for the wire that's on there. So in putting it back in, I open up the bottom lugs and just put the breaker back on the three wires the way that, uh, just the same way the other one came off. And then you will tighten them down one at a time or all at the same time, whatever however is easiest for you. What's important is that there's, there's no power there and we know that because we disconnected it. So uh, once I got those wires in, nice and tight, you always gotta make sure everything's tight never leave anything loose that's the worst thing to do then it, it'll go back in opposite of how it came out I'll go by sliding it down into those clips and this is the only shot I could get at the time so but you slip the bottom in and then you go to push it in from the top and you got to lift those clips back up all three of them while you're pushing at the same time and then it snaps into place and it's home so that's the new breaker installed, and it's not pulling out. So my three wires need to go back on. I'm going to put them off in the same opposite order that the other ones came off. But first, I'm putting those lugs on right here. You can see. Uh, you see how they're much smaller? They actually fit the wires perfect. You can see the wires next to them. But and then there go those. Uh, there they go. Going back in one at a time. It's all pretty simple stuff guys you know like it's not really difficult if you pay attention and you use common sense you can really do anything a lot of guys are scared of electricity you definitely need to respect it and that's me just giving them a nice good tight tight finish and I go back over it to make sure they're nice and tight Yep. All right, now it's power time. So one at a time, I'm gonna use my big long needle nose one at a time to get them back in. And as soon as you connect one to one of, like, like in this case, as soon as I connected the, the blue one, I'm gonna assume that the other ones are, are hot. Even if my breaker's off and it can't back feed through, I don't care. I'm still assuming that it's hot and I'm not taking any chances. See, that's very important to have, in my opinion, that screwdriver wrapped with an electrical tape. Or you could get, you know, pay more money and get tools that are insulated. But I'm cheap, so that's how I do it. And now the breaker's in. Uh, it's ready to turn on. So at this point, uh, the job is done, basically. I know that everything is good. Uh, I know that the defrost has been working properly. Because if it hadn't been, we would have gotten a, a, a call back on it, not cooling again. But just to be sure, put my contact, I mean my amp meter on it. And just to test it before I end up calling it a, a day, I'm going to push it in just like that. And you'll see it right now hit 34 amps. So we are good to go. Job's complete. And that's all she wrote. So, I appreciate you guys watching. 
I am trying to get as much content as I can up on YouTube here for y'all to watch and enjoy. And like and, subs like and subscribe if you, if you haven't and you feel that my videos are worth subscribing to. Definitely subscribe and like it. But, again, I appreciate you watching. And I will see y'all next time.